All right, welcome to another edition of Did You Know About Photoshop? And in this particular lesson, I want to cover the Liquify tool um, <clears throat> and the Liquify environment to some to some degree at least. So the Liquify tool is basically this tool that you um, that has a lot of different practical applications. But I got to tell you, in my professional experience, most people use this tool to take off 5, 10, 15 pounds from any particular subject in their photograph. Um, and that's how we're going to use it here today. And I'm not going to go through and completely sl slim this model down. Um, I'm just going to go through and show you um, the basics of the tool. And I'm just going to slim down kind of this area and maybe her stomach a little bit just to give you an idea how the tool works and how to use um, the different complementary tools within the Liquify um, suite. So all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and back out here. And as you can see, we have a plus size model. And to begin using the Liquify tool, what you're going to want to do is go up to Filter and say Liquify. And that brings you into the Liquify tool environment. And as you can see here, we have a new um, set of tools over here that are different from our ordinary ones in Photoshop that you can see over there in the background. And um, our brush information is all over here. You can see what I'm using um, on that side. And then this is probably the most common tool um, in this particular suite and that's the forward warp tool and that's primarily what we're going to be using so I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this model and again I want to change this area or um, slim down this area so what I'm going to do is um, use the forward warp tool now this is how a lot of people I've seen um, who have some familiarity with the liquify tools um, would use this tool and they would basically come in here and they would start to um, you know push things in but as you can see when I do that the bar also gets manipulated and that's because my brush is touching it right now I could try and solve that problem by using a smaller brush and let me show you what happens then so I'm going to restore everything so if I were to use a smaller brush for example I could try and get in real tight here and you know push all this in but as you can see what starts to Let's start. And by the way, this is, can be very difficult with a mouse. So if you don't have a Wacom tablet, um, this could be a very difficult process and certainly not very smooth. But what you can see here when you use a smaller brush for this is you start to get all this divoting and that you got to go in and correct. And you'd have to zoom in even further and try and smooth that out a little bit. And it just doesn't look natural. Um, and, you know, again, the same thing would be for up here. And it just starts to look a little, a little wonky and, and and the viewer of the image very often is more likely going to see that the image was manipulated and that's obviously an effect we don't want or an outcome that we don't want so how do you fix that well the way that you fix that let me restore this image so the way that you fix that is to use this complementary tool um, and that is the uh, freeze mask tool And so I'm going to click on that and what the freeze mask tool does is it says is it tells Photoshop which areas of the image that you don't want Photoshop to manipulate. So basically what you do is you brush over those areas and um, and you can't see where I'm brushing because the show mask checkbox is not checked so let's go ahead and check that. Then you can see the red which is where I had originally done my brush stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and mask off some of these areas that I might hit with my brush. Um, so I don't want to go in too far on the model, so I'm going to go ahead and just say don't touch here. And I'm going to go ahead and go over the bar, and I can be sloppy here because there's nothing in the background. And then as I get here, I want to be a little more judicious. Okay, and that's pretty decent, but I am going to zoom in. And this isn't client work or any other kind of professional project that I'm working on, so I don't have to be perfect. It's just uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, I want to get the concept across. So all that said, though, I'm going to go ahead and um, do a decent job, just not perfect, that's for sure. Okay, now if you go too far with a mask um, or something, like if I were to go out like that, you can obviously control Z, but if it's kind of after the fact, you can do the um, thaw mask tool and that'll just erase an area where you might have bled over too far. So I'm going to back out and I'm also going to go into... Um, uh, this area right here and let's get back to the freeze mask tool 
and I'm going to increase my brush size and let's go over the hand because we definitely don't want to manipulate that and let's get right in here this doesn't have to be perfect either so I'm not going to touch this area at the moment I'm just going to bring your stomach in a little bit um, and I want to definitely cover this line here on her leg so that that doesn't get manipulated in this process okay so that's pretty decent I'm going to back out and what I'm going to do so you can see right now that this backside of the natural out of the camera image isn't perfectly smooth and that's just I, I believe because of the outfit she was wearing it's, it's not um, it's not perfectly form-fitting so I mean it's tight obviously but it's it's a uh, it divots in some areas and part of that's because of her because of her how tight it is on her particular body style etc um, so I'm going to increase my brush size because again we don't want those small brushes um, that create divots that we have to go in and re-manipulate or readjust we want larger brush strokes that are more fluid um, so I'm going to go ahead and do this and for experimentation purposes and I'm going to click on my forward warp tool and I'm just going to start to push in the areas that I want to um, you know where I want to thin her down so the crosshair um, at the center of my brush is where all the gravity is weighted you can certainly feel it as you're using it and again I'm not going to do anything too crazy um, and then I'm going to go over here to the um, stomach area that I was talking about earlier and I'm going to go ahead and just push this in just a tad there we go and I'm going to hide my mask for a second just to take a look at it and again if, if this was client work I'd, I'd and I wanted to thin this model down for whatever reason I'd obviously work on the thighs and do kind of the same kind of process with the thigh, thigh area um, her arms aren't horrible. I might bring them in just a little bit. Her face looks really good to me. Um, her bust looks great. And her uh, her shoes and feet I might actually bring in just a tad. Um, yeah, probably. But anyway, nonetheless. So there are other tools within this suite that you might play around with. There is the pucker tool, which sucks things in. And, and you could use a pucker tool. Um, like, for example, you could, you could set it here. And what that would do is, here, I'll just show you. See how it just starts to suck it in. Now I have it all set to 100% and I clicked really hard there. Um, so it was, it was very extreme. I'm going to go back to where we were. Um, but that gives you an idea. Again, it just sucks things in. I generally prefer to push, which is why I use the, um, the forward warp tool. Um, equally, you could use a bloat tool for something. And a bloat tool basically expands things and blows them up. So you could do that type of thing. You could be a little bit more subtle. Do that. Um, uh, you could use something like that from here, where you're kind of pushing it in that way. Now, it's a little bit more reckless if you ask me. I, I don't have as much success thinning people down using that, but it gives you an idea of how that works. Um, so I believe that's where I was. That's my final. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and say okay. And I'm going to show you the difference between the um, original and then the uh, corrected version. So there you go. So there's the original and there's the corrected. And it looks good on the back side. Um, no additional indenting and divots. I didn't go in and fix them. Um, again, if this was a, a professional project, I'd go in and I would smooth this out a little bit um, at a real granular level. Um, and then you also notice that on this thigh area where we pushed, we did lose a little bit of data here, and it starts to break out. Um, and there are other techniques that I would do to correct that. Um, and if you went back and maybe played with that with a little bit more time and detail, you would, you'd be able to fix that with those tools and not have to use other techniques. Um, but nonetheless, that just gives you kind of a general idea. So that is the liquify tool. It's super powerful. Feel free to go out and uh, grab one of your images of, of a friend or family member or yourself for that matter, thin them down, blow up their head, um, whatever you want to do with that suite of liquify tools, just play around with them. They're really powerful. I think you'll enjoy them and get a lot of use out of them. Thanks.